And everybody, welcome back to 32 All The Way. We've got a whole bunch of firsts today. It's the first time that somebody's been on twice in a little amount of time that we have our show. Jen also won our Battle Royal, our first ever 32 All The Way Battle Royal. <laughs> you defeated Lara 76 to 62. <laughs> and we Amazing. also have, yeah, and we also have a sponsor. I'm going to have to start learning how to do these edit, uh, video editing a little bit better. Beyond the Leash in Mississauga, Ontario. Two friends of mine that own a dog training school, Eric Straitmans and Melissa Riley. Uh, great friends of mine. Eric could actually come in and tell you some hair curling stories about down the uh, down the uh, the lane days. Uh, Vince is more or less based on him, <laughs> so he could tell you some crazy stuff. Let's get started. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you what's for been, having me. What's been going on? It's been a wild ride. It's been really, really busy. I've been trying to work on book two in the Heaven Sent series. Um, I'm about a third of the way through the book and then just trying to keep up with social media, which is sort of out of control. Twitter is. is really blown up. I mean, even since the last time I talked to you, I think it's more than doubled. And you walk away from the computer and you come back and you have a hundred notifications and uh it, it's it's been really kind of crazy but i've met some amazing people yourself included and i had a chance to finally read your book i was i was uh, putting some pictures up as i was going along and uh <laughs> my my husband has thoroughly enjoyed my little mini book reviews as i was reading and he would say to me every day, what are Ian and Viking doing today? And I'd be like, oh, you're not going to believe what happened. And I would tell them as if they were people that I worked with. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's been a lot of fun. It's been great. And, again, we were talking about it before we, uh, we hit the record button. I can't thank you guys enough. And uh, we should maybe take a minute to, uh, uh, to not name drop a couple people. But, you know, Lara and Dominic, uh, R.L. Tipton, Rhonda, whatever you guys call her on there. Uh, <laughs> There's three or four of you. Now I'm getting stuck. Uh, Eva Alton, uh, yep. Greer. I can't remember her whole name. Greer. She's one of the ones who's on all the time. And of course, by love, Alyssa, you guys have been great. And it's exactly what I think the social media should do. There's been a little bit of interplay in between, uh, in between us, but it hasn't been, you know, too much. Yep. It hasn't been, you know, I don't, I'm sure you feel the same way. I, I don't want to read all the Trump postings. I don't, you know, I yeah, don't, no, that's I don't, not what I'm out there for. I, I don't particularly <laughs> care that you, uh, you know, that you're not getting along with your husband at the moment. I mean, I understand people bring it in. And what's also great about you guys is it's not the generic, just we're trying to get hits. Mm -hmm. Those ones are starting. I don't know about you that started, you know, chocolate or ice cream or chocolate or vanilla. Like, dude, seriously, you know, yeah. <laughs> or just, you know, the inflammatory statements is just, I thought we've got around that with our yeah. little group and, uh, and hopefully it stays that way. Like I said, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, Lara is actually on the short list, oil and water, because I got, I received you. I received, uh, I think I told you, uh, a couple of other ones. Uh, David Galata sent me a book. I ordered some, so I've got like a backlog of like eight or nine books to read now. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty far behind, too, on, on the number of readings. From have you, have you read Lara's yet? I have read Lara's. It's it's excellent. Uh, it's a vampire book, so yeah. it, you know. Um, but it's a very different spin. You know, it's definitely current. You know, up to date, and you're feeling like you're in 2020, so you're not feeling like you're reading something uh, that was written 20 years ago or anything like that. So, um, and it's very personal. You know, you really get very deeply involved with these two women that the book revolves around. Um, the writing is very good. You can tell that Lara is just a natural storyteller. Uh, and she really gets into the description of what the person is feeling, you know, very emotional read, but not, you know, not like a romance novel or anything like that. Although there is a romantic component to it, but these are very strong female lead characters that you really get to, to know really well as you're reading it. But um, you know, there's action. Obviously, these are vampires. It's mm -hmm. bloody. Uh, it's what you would expect it to be. So you're not going to be disappointed if you're a vampire uh, fan. But at the same time, I think she goes several level, levels deeper, which is nice. You know, you're not reading your sort of quintessential on the surface, you know, vampire for the sake of being bad. I, I felt really bad when I first met her because I made a couple comments saying, yeah, man, if I have to read one more vampire book or, or if I have to read one more variation of uh, of Twilight or whatever. And I mean, I'm just old enough to, like, those books mean nothing to me. 
Like yeah. obviously I read, you know, yeah. Interview with the Vampire and that stuff, but then yep. the reviews that you guys were giving and the little bit that I, I could find online, no, that's awesome. It's really great to see somebody take, it's really great to see somebody take that, excuse me. <clears throat> it's really great to see somebody take that kind of setting and there's nothing new. It does, your book, my exactly. book, anybody's book, exactly. there's nothing new. But to take that setting and have people want to read it. Yep. That, you know, yep. just a, a world of difference. Yeah, I mean, it's, definitely closer to interview with a vampire than it is twilight you know and i it, it's interesting twilight has sort of come up because stephanie myers has a new book um and i think a lot of people are getting down on it because it's basically a retelling of the story from a different point of view which is never good uh, no. you know uh, for a fan um of something but it's it's really been bashed recently and i've i found it very fascinating by a lot of um, younger people who are reading it for the first time today. And I really think it's taken out of context. I think, you know, the author was an older author. And I think that she, at the time that she wrote it, I think she was hearkening back to her own personal experiences of what it was like to be in love at 17, which would have placed her in the 80s, you know, in the 90s, even though it was a current book and it was set in 2000s. If you really look at that story, deeper than just the, especially the movie, the books were much better than the movie. Um, it's sort of taken out of context. And I wonder if reading it for the first time today, if, if you can't really get it, if you, you're not able to really understand it um, so without are, that context. Are they all basically the same characters? Just like you said, from another point of view? Because that's also uh, very hard to do to start with. Yeah, no, so Twilight is written from the point of view, you know, it's a, it's a YA novel because the main heroine is in high school. So it's, mm -hmm. a, it's written from the point of view of a girl in high school who falls in love with a vampire, comes to understand that he's a vampire, but is still in love with him. So the, the, the problem is that she knows he's a vampire and she should stay away from him, but that she's in love with him and she's 17. So it's, you know, all the things that you would expect. And I think being 17 in the 80s is very different than being 17 today oh, and i think absolutely. for i think for young girls who are reading for the first time today is maybe missing a little bit of context me myself personally i i read it because my nieces at the time in the early 2000s were reading it and they said you got to read this book this was the book to read and i thought oh my goodness like i hadn't ever read a book before that brought me right back to high school and i'm probably the same age as the author um mm -hmm is so to me it was like you kind of needed to have that experience to get what that was like and that's missing now and i think it's it's getting a little bit beat up you know unfairly you know, We're, missing you that know context. we've 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 uh we've done the 60s and the 70s to death uh, yeah and then they moved into the 80s and now they're getting into the 90s and it's just again you know from a perspective of somebody who was there you can say yeah you know that wasn't really what happened or <laughs> that part yeah. wasn't really all that cool. But <laughs> yeah. to have what, what I've always found a hard sell with those romances is, and I think every single person in the world has gone through that. At 17, there was a guy that you were absolutely in love with that six months mm -hmm. later, you didn't even talk to. So that's what yeah. I always thought was a hard sell with those books. I'm going to be with you forever. Oh yeah. <laughs> so I've always thought that that was kind of, was kind of hard, but. Let's move on to mine. Not that I want to make this all about me, but I wanted to have, see what people thought about mine. So anything Ring Falls? Did you join the story from start to back? Was it a little too vulgar? I get a lot of hacks on the, uh, on the language and some of the, uh, some of the situations that my characters get shoved in. I thought this was a crazy, insane, wild ride. I mean, this story is uh, just Thank nutty. You from beginning to end, but in the best possible way, in all the best possible ways. And I, you know, again, um, I grew up in the city, so I was surrounded, even though I didn't have this personally myself and, and came from, I guess what would be considered like a lower middle class family, but around me in a major city like Boston, there were drugs. There was, and in the eighties, lots of prostitution. There was, mm -hmm. you know, you know, you could see it, you know, you, you, you couldn't go too far um, without coming into contact with it. And I had friends of friends of friends who lived that sort of lifestyle. So to me, this, I didn't have a hard time reading it because I thought, no, th this is real, real. There is a lot of what was in there that was like, yeah, if you're living this lifestyle, you are up all night. You may not have showered. You may not have eaten. You are living 
in a world that most people do not understand and can't relate to. You know, these people are not getting up at an alarm and going to work, you know, no. so it's, <laughs> you, right. So it's, but for the average person, if you've never seen that, or if you just try to take it at face value with any sort of, again, context, it might seem unbelievable, but I was able to see that and be like, yeah, I knew people like this, people who dealt drugs, people who, you know, ran gangs, you know, and not personally, like they were my best friends, but enough that I could read this and be like, yeah, this is all very real. This is all very true. It has a ring of truth to it. Um, but there's a lot of humor. There mm -hmm. is a lot of camaraderie in this book. And I don't want to say too much that gives away you know, obviously your story, because that's the worst. Um, and I had told you before and in the review that I love the character of Viking um, because I think everybody wants a Viking, right? Everybody wants mm. to know that when the shit hits the fan, you have that one person you could yeah. call that is there for you, that comes for you with no questions asked and then stays by your side until the end. And I think you did an exceptionally good job writing that character in particular cause to make you feel that way to make you want that in your life even though he's flawed clearly as is ian as is a whole bunch of these these characters in here um but it doesn't matter you're still rooting for them and i you know i have been talking to aspen and lara about it you know they had asked me if if you know would i recommend the book i said absolutely but i would be remiss in saying if you're all feminist, all woman, you know, hear me roar. You may have a hard time with this a little bit. And I did want to ask you, you know, how you dealt with that. I mean, I saw one of your reviews online, which I think is horrible when people give poor reviews anyway, but a poor review where, and I'm assuming it's a woman wrote, you know, this is a book for men. That's not true. It's not a book for men, but it may make you feel uncomfortable. The viewpoint of how you're reading about the women in this story and, you know, what has the, what has it been like for you from women, from women you know, from women you don't know about that sort of feedback? Two, two things came to mind, and I've tried to stay all the way through this. Uh, it, I guess, you know, if we go back to old cliches. Uh, I have no idea how to write for a woman. So I tried to tone it down very much. But I also didn't want to have, I mean, Ian, Ian's obviously not a, a, a great guy. There's quite a few women floating around. Uh, but I, I didn't, I, I just didn't want to put anybody down because again, some of those people, you know, are still my friends. Some of the yeah. people that, that they're loosely based on and some of them had, I, uh, you were just saying you had uh, a lower middle-class background. I had a stable middle-class background. Mom and dad were home at night. They were great. They did anything for us. We saw our grandparents on the weekend. Some of the other stories that you would hear from these people would just, would, would just put you in tears. Yeah. What they were went, what they went to, and how they want them. So, I, I don't want to wuss out and, and give you a non-answer, but I kind of sidestepped the issue. But I couldn't have a, a story about a strip club without some women hanging around. I just yeah. didn't want to make it too gratuitous. Yeah, and I didn't feel that it was like that, and I didn't feel that it was heavy-handed. And as far as you know, the swear words. I mean, to me, that's real to the context. Like that, that's real to the environment. Um, and I, I know that to be true. You know, I spent seven years working for a produce distributor okay. and you want to hear people swear, <laughs> you know, go to a produce distributor, go to a trucking company. They can't get through a sentence without the F bomb multiple you times know, to the point that you don't even, you come to realize they don't realize they're no. doing it. You know, and, it's and, just a, another adjective. And this is totally to what it is. And it would get to the point where even that I toned down a bit. Like there were guys literally that. When I went when I went back and I started teaching after I finished school, I had one teacher tell me, you know, I can tell when you're about to say fuck. He says because you stop talking for a second, and, you, and <laughs> he goes, I can tell when you're gonna do it. He goes, and you see your mind switch. Now, hopefully, I've got out of that. But yeah. in the beginning, yeah, like some of these conversations, and it didn't matter if it was like, I always use my dad for an example. I went went for a beer with my dad, and it was rah, 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 rah. Yeah. never when my never when my mom was around, never when my sister was around, never when there were other ladies in the room. But it was just the guys and stuff, and you know he was he was a guy. Uh, but yeah, some people I've, I've I've been nailed to the cross with that a couple times. And hey man, I didn't write a book about librarians. I didn't. <laughs> I you know I think it I think it fit where it had to fit. 
Well, and it's interesting because if you took the book now, the way it is today, you said, you know what, I'm going to take out even half of the swearing. And you know what, I'm going to take out some of the imagery of these strippers. And you know what, I'm going to take this out because uh, this thing that Ian thinks about all the time, you know, it, it, it makes me look bad. Then the story wouldn't be the story, right? It has to all be there in order to really fit what you're trying to, what you're trying to tell. So I think that as long as the story the reasons that they're in there are to be true to the story and the environment and the context of the story, then I think it belongs there. So I think it would be a very different book if you had attempted to strip it down or, or take it out. And I don't think it would have rang true. And I don't think people would have been really rooting for Ian to mm -hmm. make it right. You're, you're ruining the, you're rooting for him flawed and all for him to get to the other side of this and to get to where, you know, I, safety if you will i tried so hard to make him unlikable and <laughs> <laughs> i had it i had uh not arguments but conversations with my editor saying like you know it's coming across like like everybody's rooting for him like make him you know i said why well, i said he's a terrible guy i said he's stoned all the time i said he's got like four girlfriends i said he has no morals he has no you know compunction of saying in the book like i have no morals i put myself in this situation i just didn't want to you, you always seem to have that one scene or the the one thing in the movie where the secondary guy does something totally terrible, just so you know he's terrible. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have that experience with a lot of these guys. A lot of these guys were, uh, uh, you know, guys you would not want to cross. But in that environment, it wasn't too bad. Like some of them, you know, as much as you, again, people give me a hard time about. It, some of them are still buddies of mine. It doesn't fit in too much with, you know, what I do for a living now. But some of them are bad people. It's just they chose that life, and just either you can't get out, or you made so much money you don't want to leave. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, I mean, I think it's going to be an uncomfortable read for some people, but you know, those are the moments where you grow. Those are the moments where you learn something. Those are the moments, there are bits of wisdom in the book and in the story, just like there are in anybody's story. And I think that you don't get that if you don't give it the chance to, to read through it. I think we've pretty well got the last medium now where we can uh, get away with it a little bit. Because you know yeah. you read you read books about pedophilia, uh, you read books about uh, you know unspoken romance or that kind of stuff. You you can't do anything visually anymore, because again you just get nailed to the cross, or you get the, you know you have to have every single group represented. That was something else that I had a, a couple of people say. Well, you know the only women are girlfriends or moms. Well, that's what it was like. <laughs> that yeah. was there. There wasn't a ton of us hanging around, you know, uh, with. Uh, with a lot of ladies in the car, but it, I just, I, you can't, you just brought up a minute ago, you can't please everybody. There's no, there's no two ways around that. Yeah. But, yeah. but I think oh. that readers can see false things in a story, right? Like if you had placed these other characters in there just for the sake of putting them in there, or if, like I said, you had stripped out some of these pieces that make that world very much real for the reader, they would have seen through it and then you would have gotten killed because oh this is so fake like what is this character that wouldn't be real to this world or why do you have this in there that wouldn't have existed in your time you know growing up in in you know the 80s or 90s or whatever era you grew up in so to some extent it has to all be there but at the same time those are all the ingredients that make it work mm -hmm. no that's great like i said i'm, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. i wanted to when we start doing the little channel here, I want to do this with everybody. Come back on and talk about mine. Come back on and talk about talk about yours and other people. Because again, like I, you know, I, this show's about more about Lara than it is about us. But I don't want to. I don't want to keep going back to Lara. I I would have I would have passed that book by. And then your your description of how it was written, and then what other people are saying, and then the way she presented it, like it's on my list of things to read. Right. Yeah. Whereas I'm sure Lara might have walked by, you know, a, a book about bikers and said, ah, I'm not gonna <laughs> There's no way I'm going to read this. And I just, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to attack anybody. I just, you know, pick up the book and read it. Don't tell me, you know, don't complain about the little things. Like, just tell me about the writing overall. Yeah. Right. And oh. I tried really hard to get a couple of books that uh, are going to, are going to go in that, in, go in that, in that direction. So. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I think. Up? I think that there's just so many reasons to read something outside your genre, right? There are, there's, there's, there's bits of wisdom, but there's also things you can learn, especially as a writer. As a writer, you have to be reading and you should be reading outside your genre. I've always been somebody that read multiple. So I've read 
crime dramas. I've read nonfiction fiction. I've read books about vampires, but I've also read romance novels. I've always been somebody that's read a little bit of everything. And some of my favorites are people that then as a writer, you're trying to emulate, you know, you're trying to build an in-depth character like Neil Gaiman can, you know, you're trying to write description the way John Krakauer does as a nonfiction nature writer. So I think there are things to be learned and I don't think you should snub your nose at a book either based on the cover or based on the subject matter. There are things in here, you know, everybody should read this book and see how this main character was, was written and see how Viking was written and see if you're, if you're rooting for them in the end. And I guarantee most people are, that's just good writing. You know, I put that in the review and I said it online. You did, thank you. It's, that's what it takes, you know, cause a lot of times you see bad guys for the sake of being bad guys. This is not what this book is. These are flawed characters. This could be anybody that you know, it could be you, you know? So it's very real and it's very raw and, and you should go along for the ride. No, that, I really appreciate that. Like I said, it's great to hear. I just wanted to, again, I, you, we're all in the beginning phases of writing these books and it's just been so great that we've had this little group to come together. And I haven't had anything from any of you guys that I've just been like, oh man, I can't get through this. This is terrible. It's, <laughs> it's, 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 nice, it's nice to see. I think it's only going to get better for everybody. It's only going to improve what I'm going to look for when I'm going through someone else's books and what I'm going to realize that I have to do when it comes to mine. So, yeah, for sure. Giving, every, giving everybody some pointers. Jen, I thank you so much for your time. What do we got to, what do we have on tap? Is there a date for coming out for the yeah. series? Yeah, so it is, it is a trilogy. So the second book, I've already lined up my dates with my editor. So uh, it has to be finished. The writing will be finished at the end of September. She'll have it in our hands the beginning of October. So I'm hoping I can get it out next spring, early spring, if if not uh, April, then May, and, and get that second book out there. That is so fantastic. Like I said, uh, you're going to be, you know, we broke a whole bunch of records for a show that I've only been doing now for four or five months. And <laughs> it almost positive you'll be the first third person, third time person back. <laughs> to definitely have to come on and return the favor for you and uh, put up the review. Again, for anybody listening, I don't think people realize how important it is just to put that review but again I can't thank you enough because it was somebody who read the book you had two sections that obviously you know you didn't flip through the back and do a couple of pages you, you quoted uh, you quoted something Ian said and I think you quoted something Viking said which is still man I use it I use that line to this day you know what I mean let's keep hitting the guy he gets back up kick him in the face I love I love that line I love that line I like I said I love that character and I talked about them as I was reading it I would wake up in the morning and my husband would be like what did what did Ian and Viking do now I'm like you're not gonna believe how stupid they are like you are not gonna believe oh, yeah. the choices they make you are not gonna oh, believe yeah. how crazy they were last night and then you know I'm telling him the story and he's laughing and he's like it sounds like a wild ride and it definitely was are you writing a second one to this? Are you writing a sequel? Yeah. I, you know what? What we're trying to do now, again, is that uh, it's just been, uh, it's a, just a whole bunch of things coming together. You guys, again, I can't thank you guys enough. If we didn't mention everybody already before, uh, Lara, Dominic, By Love Elisa, Eva Alton, uh, Show, I can't remember Show's name, it's a Canadian writer. You see his, I had his name at the bottom. Uh, Andrew, man, I should have wrote better notes. Andrew's been helping me with some background for uh, my uh, the next one when it comes to addiction. So there's definitely a number two, but what we're trying to do now is cut out, or what I'm trying to do is cut out the mistakes that we had before, because I'm getting a fourth and fifth uh, uh, little slew of sales because you guys you guys have been picking it up and you guys have been sharing the word. And uh, so now I've, I've got two or three uh, chapters done, but it's just something set in my mind really well. And actually, I wanted to ask you this before you go as a writer. Uh, a buddy of mine who writes, just writes all the time, just likes writing, stuck something in my head when we were playing the second. And he said, you really have to work your way into a decent story. Then basically what he was saying is for, for Ian to get out the way he does, and I don't want to ruin my own book, for everything to end the way that it does was almost a perfect storm. So he says, you remember, he goes, you have to come up with a perfect storm a second time, or it's going to be, you know, down the lane, you know, meets Abbott Costello, or, you know, <laughs> down the lane goes to Egypt. I, I don't want, I don't want to be writing the same book for 20 years. Right, you think right, I can right. pull this off? Do you think there's a, another thing in here? I, not that, you know, if you don't, you can let me know, but 
We're trying so hard. I didn't write any notes for the first one. This was a story that was in my head for years. And people always say, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I received notes and, and, and things back from my editor. I just, I grabbed the phone and I would write and I would send it to him. I sent him. Now I'm actually planning out a story because I have to find uh, a decent way for at least Ian and Viking to come back together without killing each other, without saying, man, after the last book, like, I don't want to hang out with you anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I definitely think there's something there. There's a lot of meat still on that, that bone between the two of them. And you can do it a number of different ways. You can either put them in a completely different context. You could do a time jump. You could introduce a brand new character that maybe they're teaching lessons to, you know, there's a couple different ways that you could do it. But I definitely think that if you're, if you read the book and you're a fan of the book, you're going to want to read more about um, what happens to them without it being some sort of weird fairy tale ending. I don't think anyone's looking for that, but well, I think that there was enough left at the end that it was like, Oh, I, I hope, there's some piece of this that continues in some way. That was my only personal disappointment about this. I don't know if you're a big fan of Monty Python. They used to show yeah. the old Monty Python comics. <laughs> yes. When they yeah. didn't they don't know how to end a sketch, they would just end a sketch. Yeah. The one, yeah, the, yeah. One, the, one, the one criticism I've had for people is the book just, I, I don't want to say how, but, but the book just ends. And I said, I had no end. I had no end. And I was going to, I was going to kill Ian at the end of the book. And the editor said, what the hell is wrong with you? He said, you can't kill him at the end of the book. And I said, well, yeah. I said, I'd do it. that would be a great, you know, blam, 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 he's dead. And people go, oh, you can't do that. So that is my only personal, I wouldn't say disappointment, but I could have had something more come that way. So the idea for this one is, I don't want to give away too much, but basically this next one starts like a week after that one ends. Yep. So we still get the jump. But within that week, we see what an idiot Eden has already been and how he's messed things up to start the next book. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if he wasn't messing things up and making all the wrong choices, uh, then we wouldn't be on the ride with him, right? I mean, the whole yeah. reason that you're reading characters like this and the whole reason why people love flawed characters is because we've all made mistakes and we've all been in those moments where we're kicking ourselves saying, oh my gosh, that's, if everybody was perfect and nobody was swearing and there was nothing going on, you wouldn't read the book. You'd probably die of boredom. I mean, nobody's yeah. writing a book like that. You're writing a book um, with, with flawed characters. You're writing a book in precarious situations. You know, you're, that's what you want to read. So they, I, I would say that that's believable. They tell you not to, to, to talk about your influences too much. Uh, in Goodfellas, when they're starting, they realize the guy's not dead in the trunk. Uh, and the lid goes down. Yeah, I wanted that kind of. To me, you know, the next thing you know, he's going to the Witch's Protection Program, and the movie's over. It was just pow, 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 yeah. pow, pow. Yeah. That was the only idea that stuck in, the, in my mind for down the lid. From the minute he wakes up and realizes he's got to deal with all this crap in one day, it's just a pow, 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 pow. And that yeah. I, I don't know. I think I think it, it it leads into the action. Yeah, I mean, I'm a big fan of that too. I when I was talking to uh, and Laura has a very different style than mine. And when I was talking to Laura, I said, you know, your writing is beautiful. There's lots of beautiful descriptive writing. You know, there are good amounts of of text leading you down the story. You know, it's almost lyrical, if you will. I said, and I'm like, I shoved you into that roller coaster and I threw you right off the cliff. Mm. I mean, that's when you're reading my book. These characters, you know, and obviously we're talking about heaven and hell and, and there's guardians and, and demons, but I mean, these fight scenes, you know, and they're mostly the, the women are the, the strong female lead characters, but these fight scenes of these women, I hope they come across as very strong, but I hope they also come across as very realistic for, for the story. But I like the action jumping from action sequence to action sequence. So that's, that's the way that I, that's the way that I write, but you know, I, I liked that part of the story because that would be something that I would write in, in similar fashion. As long as you could pull a thread between it, not to, again, not to criticize anybody else's work, but I find nowadays, especially when you see comedies, I've always been a big comedy fan, there's not that one thread that leads through the whole thing. It's just this stupid thing happened, and okay, now we're going to do something else stupid. Yeah, now yeah. We're going to do something else stupid. Uh, I haven't read yours yet, but I flipped through it. There seems, I, I just, I'm a big fan of continuity. You know what I mean? Is this has to, you know, what was he doing standing here already? Or, you know, what's she doing doing there? It's just, again, I know you, sometimes you have to use that old MacGuffin or whatever you want to call your plot device, but it's just, you know, one too many times. And I think people just say, you know what, throw the book aside. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm not a big fan of that, of introducing either a character or a scene or even uh, a setting where you never return to it again. I think that everything sort of has to come back around to the beginning. I'm a big fan of that. Like if I meet a character and you t and the author takes all this time for me to get to know them and meet them, and then all of a sudden they disappear from the story never to return again, I'm not a big fan of that. I think to myself, why did I just waste all this time reading this thing and this person doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter, it doesn't further the story, it doesn't matter as it goes along. So it definitely has to come back around and in the second book these characters that you met in the first they're all back in the second like they're coming mm -hmm. through to the second story because you've gotten to know them and hopefully care about what happens to them and so you need to pull those those characters forward those main characters forward and so that's important to me too as I'm reading something especially if someone really falls hard for a particular character there's nothing worse than you know other than if you kill them off there's nothing worse than if they just don't show up again or it proves itself to be non-essential to the story yeah it, it's terrible uh quick question the art in the back and the art cover book I absolutely love it are yeah. you staying are you staying with this through the book yeah so is this it gonna was... be similar or like the same because I just love just love the whole thing yeah, so this was this was an amazing piece of art work by Jeff Brown, which is part of Jeff Brown Graphics. Oh, okay. He's he's uh, a Canadian artist. I found him on readz.com, uh, which is also Jeff where Brown, I found my say? yeah Jeff Brown. That's also where I found my editor. Um, but Jeff is uh, out of Canada, and I will definitely be calling him for for book two for it's sure. Great. You know, aesthetics. You know, I I looked at possibly. Hey, you know, I love artists artwork looking at different things I thought about it for a brief moment of well what if somebody else did the second one you could get you know a completely different view or vision mm -hmm. but he was just so spot on in the first one that it was like if the three books are next to one another I really wanted to seem like some giant mm -hmm. mural yeah. you know yeah. what I mean like some giant continuous mural so I'm I'll definitely be um be hitting him back up probably you know he takes about six weeks or so to do these okay. covers six seven weeks to do these covers i think at the time that i reached out to him it was a couple weeks before he got started so i'll probably be reaching out to him at the beginning of the year and maybe do a lead up i've seen a lot of people do this on social media maybe do a lead up to a cover reveal and mm -hmm. uh you know I, I know the name of the second book but uh, maybe do a, a reveal of the name of the second book too. That's all ways mm. in which you could sort of build up some promotion for your for your next book. I don't know if you saw it. I've got it up. Uh, I had it up on Facebook and I had it up uh, on Twitter last night. I'm doing this for an author called Beth Hildebrandt. Yep. She was just in the process of getting this done and she actually got signed by a, a major publishing house. I don't want to say who, I don't want to ruin her surprise, but uh, <laughs> she we were just going to do a little interview and then she said i can't but i'll get back to you and then i thought yeah whatever i'm never here for you again and then <laughs> sent me a message the other night saying no you were really great with helping me so again i think this is what it's all about but i mean as far as your cover goes like i said you know it's just it's not gratuitous she's not yes. wearing a thong you know right. what i mean yep. her, her her breasts aren't the size of her head I yep. just, <laughs> yep. it, it was nice to see it was done tastefully but just the background and i want it so bad to be an artist <laughs> couldn't do it i was terrible terrible but kind of yeah, almost no. like the kind of Not the use of either. just the shading primary color deal and all that i just love it love it i'll have to look yeah i thought out. he did i thought he did an amazing job i thought he really captured that moment um i love the fact that you can see a few demons in the background mm -hmm. um in the yellow i love the weapon she's carrying and how detailed he was able to get on that and i think without you know, I love the fact that he's looking at them from behind because now you don't have judgments about their looks. You don't have judgments exactly. about their face. What you're looking at is these are obviously three very tough women heading towards the danger, not away from it, which is exactly what I wanted him to portray and uh, portray. And he captured that uh, in an amazing fashion. For that's what I thought, like you said, that's what I thought was really great about it is we have three women that are obviously, I'm sure they're not bad looking women, but it's not a just some of these book covers again, we had. Uh, we had a couple people say to, about ours, the whole stripper yeah. pole thing, uh, you know, don't do it. I said, ah, man, how am I going to, you know, I, we didn't have yeah. a girl bending over on the cover of the book. I said, I thought we did it without giving away too much. But this just, again, just perfectly fits your story. I don't know what he's, uh, I don't know what he's charging you, but you should definitely stay with him. <laughs> Yeah, no, he does a good job, and, and I, he's done a lot of covers. I think at this point, he's he's not on Twitter, unfortunately, but he is on Instagram, and I, I've connected with him there. But he's probably, at this point, done well over, you know, 
uh, a thousand covers at this point. He's been at this for a long time. He's relatively young, but he's been doing this for a, for a long time. Wow. Um, I forget the exact number of covers, but he is not new to this. And when we first met and we did a zoom call, which was really nice because mm -hmm. we were able to actually, you know, this was the beginning of, of craziness with COVID mm -hmm. uh, back at the beginning of the year. And he was like, what are you trying to capture here? And he actually asked the question of what I was trying to emulate on that, on that book cover. And I just think he did, an amazing job and especially when you have females i see a lot of fantasy covers where people tout oh this is a strong female lead this is a strong character and the woman's half naked on the cover it's like okay that's fine and maybe she is beautiful and goddess-like but you know it kind of conflicts to me if you have to take it there and i know there's a lot of advice in the industry about you know sex sells it obviously does yeah. um i just don't think it always has to be that way i think you can have these strong female leads without having to do that from, from a man's point of view and from somebody who's trying to look at all this marketing stuff now uh i don't mind seeing the picture of the you know the girl with the little floss t-string but i just <laughs> automatic automatically i take your story less seriously yeah unless yeah. This, unless this is what we're writing about. because i'm exactly. finding out the i'm finding out the hard way now that uh <laughs> i'm getting a lot of uh Twitter request for it, or I'm getting some personal emails that most uh, most of the biker books are about gay guys, which never entered my mind when I started writing my book. There's really? a whole series of guys out there that, and you know what, the gay romance, you go do your bit. I'm, yeah. I'm all for you, but I I have no frame of reference to write for that either. Yeah, you know I mean? yeah. If I had to see the naked girl or the naked guy, well, give me the naked girl. Put her back on the. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm okay. Yeah, I did, and like I said, and depending on what the book is, and I'm not being a snob about it. I'm just saying it was so rare to see strong female leads in fantasy that weren't half naked that it made me fall in love with the cover he did for me even more, right? Because we don't have mm -hmm. to, you know, it's it just it was one more thing that that hit for me uh, when I looked at it. It's open to interpretation. Yeah, but you're getting a pretty clear idea of, of what you're getting. I know yeah. that doesn't, that's not the best wording, but it, it's open to interpretation, but it, it's pretty clear about what you're doing. Yeah, for sure. You know, I thank you so much again for your time. Uh, another couple of weeks, like I said, you break another record to be here for the third time. We'll do this. We'll have a review up. I had the, if we can pop it up quick, I know everybody's not going to be able to see it very greatly, but it will definitely be uh, put on the bottom of the book. This is... The Canuck version, but you are available on both sides. And I'm sure if you take the time to look, you're probably available in uh, in the UK and whatnot for some yeah, reason. It is. Some... I don't know why Amazon does this, why people can't see each other's, like why they've, you know, um, sectioned off the countries. But yeah, it's it's in all of the places that Kindle Unlimited would be and Kindle books are. So that but, is, you know. Like the U.S., for example, I don't know if you've looked into this. We'll finish up by talking about this. The U.S. puts out everybody's review. Yeah. Canada seems to put up Canadian reviews and yep. select reviews from the States. The U.K. seems to put up everybody's reviews but the U.S. reviews, which hurts me because I had quite a few U.S. reviews. Yeah. I don't understand what the – I don't understand what the reasoning is. I don't – excuse me. I don't understand what the uh, what the thought process is, but yeah, it's just uh, it was nice to it was nice to see that you're on all the ones I spent this morning looking for a couple different ones and going on there. And I uh, because we no, we ordered it here. We ordered. I was going to say there's a, there's a few of them that we had to order from uh, Amazon and .com and pay the extra shipping, but yours we ordered in Canada. So there, if for any Canadians who are going to see this, there's definitely no problem getting it. Oh, that's great. Yeah. And I, I wondered about that too, right? Because there was a couple that I had to send overseas to a couple different people um, on, on Twitter because it wasn't so easy to get uh, with Amazon. So that's good to know that that was available in Canada. Before COVID hit, for some reason, friends of mine were saying like, why is my, the book seemed to be coming, no matter where they ordered it from, it seemed to be coming from Ireland or California. And I, I, again, I'm, I don't know. Trying to, I'm trying to do the algorithms here. I'm trying to figure this all out. <laughs> again, I've made such great contact with you guys and I want to improve it and make it better, but it's just, yeah, I have no idea. I don't know. But you are available at Amazon.ca. Yeah, you'll awesome. have a review up short. Yeah, that's great. We'll go from there. Jen, thank you so much for your time. Uh, thank I'm, sure you, I'll be talking to you. I'm sure I'll be talking to you on Twitter by the end of the day. Yeah, <laughs> yes, for sure. Soon. All right, bye. Bye.